Welcome back to Built Different, a podcast and community choosing to approach innovation differently. I'm Grant Hagen. I'm Brian Vizzaretta. And we're on a mission to rewrite the narrative around what innovation truly means. Last season, we did 12 episodes more focused on the field. And this season, we packed up our gear, joining teams in site trailers, offices, and even a few podcast studios, where we focused on the executive level and how innovation is making an impact within their organizations. New this season, we're introducing live streams to invite you to join the conversation. Also, we want to equip you by providing show recaps from each episode in our new Built Different download. Think different, be different, and build different. Favorite time of year. We've done this before, and uh, we're back doing it. A little fun reunion episode uh, ending the season with us here. I can't believe it's already the end of the year. Uh, Some fun milestones to celebrate for Built Different right around Thanksgiving time, uh, which we'll hit on here in a little bit. But uh, we somehow wrangled in the best of the best to come back and talk with us again, uh, which these are personally, I think are my favorite episodes to get to chat with everyone again. Uh, and Brian, good to see you again, friend. Yeah, good to see you as well. Can't wait for this. My favorite episode of the year. It is always the reunion episodes. We even squeezed out two reunion ones last season. And uh, I feel like this one is just so compact uh, with you guys joining in. So I want to get out of the way. Again, I recognize you guys haven't met and introduced each other yet. So, uh, Wilson, I'm going to start with you up in the top right, and I'll kind of circle around here uh, so you guys can get to know each other a little bit. And then we'll dive into some fun kind of uh, end of year questions that I feel like this season kind of always brings. So, Wilson, kick us off. Uh, tell us who you're with, what you do, and I'll kind of work us around the around the screen here. Hey, everyone. Nice to see you again for the, those I've met before, and nice to meet everybody who I haven't met before. Um, so, Wilson Hayworth, I oversee the virtual design and construction department at Juno Construction Company. And we're a, a large family owned general contractor in the Southeast, headquartered Atlanta, Georgia, built in Miami, Tampa, really anywhere that in the Southeast. Um, so yeah, I uh, oversee our VDC stuff, which is kind of vertically integrated through everything from design build all the way through, uh, you know, layout and operational technology tools, which is kind of where we fall into with the, the drone program. Um, so yeah, nice to, nice to meet you guys. Wilson's got a great stash going here. Uh, I'm a little envious. I had to, uh, get rid of my stash here earlier, but a lot of good facial hair on here too. Not to call you out here soon, Sean, but all right, Lucas, you're next up on my, on my chart here. Hey everybody. Uh, good to see some familiar faces and some new faces as well. Uh, I'm Lucas Manis, uh, director of IT applications at Ryan companies. Uh, never thought I'd find myself inside of a traditional IT organization. Uh, I come from a background in operations in construction, both uh, from a project management track and a VDC track. Uh, so I get to kind of work on all the, the shared services, tools behind the scenes that uh, make Ryan companies a uh, diverse portfolio of the things that we do kind of hopefully work uh, somewhat well together. Some days that happens better than others. So happy to be here. Love it. And uh, Ryan Companies, uh, you're based out of where, Lucas? Uh, we have 16 offices. Our headquarters and where I'm at uh, is in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Love it, love it. It's getting cold that time of year now. Uh, I'm going to bump to my left here, Mr. Sean. Uh, you're front and center in, in my screen here. So, How y'all doing today? I'm Sean Farrell. I'm a construction manager, like a project executive for Leighton Construction. Here in Nashville, I oversee about, uh, oh, probably about 90% of our Nashville work, which includes some of our larger clients. Uh, Randy, who you're going to meet here in a little bit, he and I have been working together for a while. and We had the uh, great opportunity to to be a part of one of these episodes and uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, we we uh, have a lot going on here in Nashville, and we're, we're just thankful for the work we have, and, and uh, thanks for having us today. Sean, I think you might have, we'll share a little bit towards the end, uh, one of our most uh, hot take quotes on on socials. We'll share it with some numbers with you guys, but there's a couple of them that that hit pretty, resonated pretty well with a few folks. So good to see you again and uh, glad to have you. you back. Randy, I'll work a little left here. Go for it. Yeah, thanks, Grant. So I'm Randy Christiansen. I'm a senior VDC manager uh, based in Nashville here with Sean. Uh, so Layton's a national fast grown company based in uh, Salt Lake City, Utah, um, offices around the country. But yeah, we're here in lovely Nashville, Tennessee. 
Love it, love it. And Randy and Sean are both on the same project uh, that we got to go out and visit at Vanderbilt. Um, so you guys are over in yeah. Nashville, which TBD if we're headed there soon for our uh, conference again next year, but more more fun with that soon. So I'm going to work did myself, you, John. Did, uh, did you just announce that? No, I didn't announce it. Not yet. I, we're still working through some stuff. That was, that was a tease. That probably wasn't the best thing. So, all right, I'm going to work... <laughs> uh, Work to my bottom right here, uh, all the Turner, Turner gang down there. Yep. Hey, hey guys, uh, I'll go first, Cole. Uh, me and Cole is sitting here in our Nashville, Tennessee as well office, so just uh, down the street from our Leighton friends. Uh, but my name is Gary Chapman. Uh, good to see some familiar faces as well as some new ones on the call. Um, I'm our regional BDC uh, manager that oversees our Memphis, Nashville, and Huntsville business unit. Um, as well as part of some of our southeastern uh, business units as well. Man, everything from, um, I think, uh, uh, John, or um, uh, who spoke first? Um, who was oh, it? Wilson. Wilson. Oh, Wilson. His stash threw me off. It was so impressive. <laughs> so in awe. Uh, but some things that Wilson mentioned earlier, just everything that VDC does uh, from, you know, uh, starting pre-con um, all the way through closeout. Every technology that's out there, um, of course, reality captures in the for, forefront <laughs> of, um, of what we like to do and what we see a big value. Um, so, yeah, good to be here and, and excited. Going to have some fun today. Yeah, love it. I love. Yeah. It. Oh, yeah. yep. Sorry, I'm, I was moving out of your box already, there, Cole. Sorry, buddy. Keep going. You're good. We're we're both together. It's confusing. Right. Uh, Cole Milberger, uh, local VDC manager for Nashville as well. Um, just been champion Nashville with uh, with Gary here. Uh, Turner uh, locally has, uh, like Gary mentioned, Nashville, Huntsville, Memphis in our region uh, locally or headquartered up in New York as well. Um, 42 offices across the United States. So excited yeah. to be here. Thanks for having us back. Love it. I left the two Joshes for the end, but uh, Berkstrom, I'll, I'll give it to you first and then we'll we'll cap it off with the other Josh. Right on. So uh, yeah, Josh Berkstrom, VP of Field Operations, Brian Companies uh, with Lucas. Um I basically work with our field teams with with respect to scheduling, uh, learning and development, field technology, and and field data analytics. So that's kind of my my uh, specialty here at Ryan. And uh, yeah, just looking forward to hearing what everybody's got to say today and maybe learn a few new things from everybody. Come on, Josh, finish us up here. Right on. Thanks, Brian and Grant, for uh, having having me back. It's great to see everybody and meet the new faces. Uh, a lot of familiar faces on here, so that's great. Um, my name is Josh Stefano. I uh, work for DPR Construction. I'm currently a regional innovation leader. Um, I actually cover two of our regions, being the Southwest and the and the Northwest. Um, and I have a similar background to some some of the other folks: virtual design and construction. Uh, reality capture. I was also in operations for a while. So um, I've had several different roles ranging from PE to uh, regional VDC lead. Um, but what I do now is more like um, really, you know, guide and, and lead and direct innovation um, and help folks take advantage of our innovation program, but also uh, build partnerships with some of our uh, technology developers and outside vendors um, along with try to influence our, our adoption, uh, along with, uh, influencing our company strategy around innovation. Love it. Uh, I just realized this as you guys are wrapping up, we have all four time zones, uh, covered, which is just crazy. And obviously from top to bottom companies, you guys all know each other from a company standpoint, but even just roles too. I think that's what was really fun about this year is, you know, Brian and I were trying to think when we were putting some of these episodes and folks together really early on in the planning stage. It was like, man, we really want to get a good diversity of uh, just roles and um, regions and all those things. And man, you guys really stepped up and uh, let us do that, which again, just, I feel like half the time in these conversations right now, it's like thanking you guys, but it's really fun. It's cool to see kind of a, a summit of that for all things together. So Brian, anything you want to add before we jump into all things wrapping up 2023, all the Spotify wraps I've seen now and all the cool stuff that we're finishing up this year on. No, no, let's get right into it. I'm excited. So Brian and I were talking about like, all right, what what do we want to pick your guys' brains about? Uh, one, just to even before we dive, like if you guys haven't tuned into other folks' episodes, would highly encourage you to. It's, it's really cool. You guys all really kind of uniquely touched on different parts and pieces of just 
implementation, innovation, challenges. You know, this year we were a little bit more focused on like an exec level and above of how do you kind of get folks to uh, see from different um, perspectives at, at maybe a corporate perspective of where innovation kind of ties into. And so, yeah, I'd, if you guys haven't tuned into each other's episodes, one, I encourage you to do that. Uh, but what we want to kind of talk about today was just kind of how years wrap up for you guys and your roles individually. And how do you guys like reflect on things that, you know, this year entailed and also plan for, you know, next year, whether that's like, Hey, at a corporate strategy level or individual department level, or even just like individual level for your own kind of like hopes and growth. So I just kind of wanted to maybe kick off of like, were there goals that you guys had this year uh, really like specifically to any one of those categories, individually, uh, department or project wise that you were like really excited or encouraged that you guys saw come to fruition. And again, I'll uh, use kind of that hand raiser down there in the bottom middle with that little, if anyone wants to kind of kick us off to start. Uh, but yeah, that's really just what I wanted to kind of hear was like, Hey, what was the goal you had this year? And what's something to celebrate that you guys saw uh, now kind of being in the season? Love it. See some hands going, Mr. Berkstrom. I'll let you go first. So I'll be the, the first one to say I'm not a goal person. <laughs> <laughs> I, I despise goals with a passion. I do set them. Uh, I try to work with them, but it seems the past few years, you know, whatever you set in motion gets sidetracked by something major. And I think we experienced that this year personally with the stuff I, I work with, um, you know, just new clients, new, new direction based on opportunity. It kind of throws things off on the direction you're, you're heading so you can pivot and go take care of something that's uh, potentially going to be more beneficial um, for, for the operations and for the company. So, so I, I tend to try to stay more nimble and uh, just go with the flow with what, with what we do, but, you know, at the end of the, at the end of the day, you know, we got to have a, a path forward and we have to have an understanding. So we still do obviously work on setting goals and uh, we, we uh, we're, we're coming into the end of the year for us specifically is always really, really busy because we're not only doing goals and strategic planning, we're doing budgets and we're also doing performance reviews. So October, December is hectic, but uh, it, it, it's, it's a good time. And, you know, just really looking at our business, looking where we're wanting, wanting to go. And we try to align our goals for 2024 with the the corporate plan and, and uh, move forward. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I, I don't like setting them, but they are helpful <laughs> to like, Oh, I did, I did think through the need for that as a, uh, as an idea to have, but yeah, it's a good, good point there. Wilson, what do you, what do you got? I was going to say like for us as a company, we do two annual town halls where we bring everybody in. So December, like next week is our end of the year town hall. You know, it's an exciting time for, for the company. We, we go over revenues, promotions, um, all that great stuff, but you know, it ties into the, the departmental strategic planning. And I think this year is, is a really cool year this year for us. We had 2020, we set our company's big, hairy, audacious goal, you know, 20 year goal. What do we want to achieve in 20 years? To achieve that goal, we had different um, base camp milestones that were set like every five years. And then we had a strategic vision that uh, on the departmental level that was kind of like a three year plan for it. Um, so the end of this year, being into 2023, was a really good chance to reflect back on the last three years and see, did we hit what we set out to do? And, and, you know, in a lot of metrics, we well exceeded that on the, on the VDC side. I mean, I think about where we were three years ago, just kind of starting our journey with drone deploy, uh, really getting into the reality capture game. We had like two VDC employees this year. We've got 11 VDC employees and we're now implementing artificial intelligence and, you know, setting all these really cool things. And like, there's a lot of stuff that we looked at this year that never thought was, was going to happen um, on it. And to, to see how far like drone deploy came, the structure site merger, how well that integrated, that really helped us achieve a lot of our goals that we set out in, in 2020. We didn't, we didn't know we were going to have a, you know, a combined platform with aerial and ground photography. We had two different business goals that we needed great site documentation and, by the end of this year, we can say, yeah, we've got great site documentation. Uh, thanks to all the work you guys did. One, one thing I want to add about 
Wilson that always stood out to me was Wilson, how many people are at Juno and how many people are part 107 certified? I think we're probably 200 uh, full-time employees and, and, you know, depending on the season, it's, it's somewhere between 30 to 50 part 107. Um, so like one in four employees uh, is able to fly a drone. That's a pretty, pretty cool statistic. I don't want to single you out, Wilson, here, but you definitely are the smallest company here. I, I didn't realize that. And, and that is not a, uh, <laughs> I think that's actually a fun thing to kind of think through and seeing all this stuff that you guys have been able to do. And um, yeah, it's encouraging to have just a spectrum of uh, different sizes of companies that you guys are all coming from, uh, which is really fun too. So yeah, love it. That's great. Uh, and, and thanks for the shameless plug. <laughs> was, uh, didn't didn't, uh, didn't think you were going there, but Josh, you're up next for me. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's a couple of questions in there, right? Like, um, goals that we're, we're, we're proud of. There was a couple of things I had, um, that I can share with the group. And one was, um, we have a partnership, uh, and, and we've been working with, um, an augmented reality company called Sightlink. Um, we've been working with them for a while and really pushing for them to, uh, really just trying to help them meet their goals and, and also develop something that works really well for us. Um, and, uh, we saw that, uh, get released in, in middle of the year, um, quite a bit of adoption and just, uh, you know, tons of feedback. So there was just the, what I was really looking for was engagement from our teams. Um, and we set a pretty lofty goal of number of projects that we wanted to touch and, you know, people that we wanted to, uh, onboard with it. Um, and in a few months we got really darn close, um, considering that it was kind of a year goal and we were looking at, you know, six months in um when we got started with that specific adoption so i was pretty proud of that that uh we touched uh almost 30 projects um with that and onboarded uh 45 40 maybe even 50 people something like that um in a pretty short amount of time um and and that's you know driving folks to to, to use that tool and leverage models in the field so that's uh super cool um, the other thing was uh, set out to, or I shouldn't say I, we set out to sort of revamp um, how we plan our pilots and and really push back a little bit on the chasing chasing shiny objects and sort of just you know finding things out there that um, you know look cool and 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 maybe folks want to implement them, but um, we wanted to push back on what value is it providing, what's the ROI. Um, you know, what is, what is really the value proposition or the, the problem statement and all this kind of stuff. And, um, what we ended up doing was putting together a really solid pilot, uh, plan template. Um, and it was interesting just the reaction amongst our own team. Um, you know, we had folks push back like, oh, you know, folks aren't going to take the time to do this, <laughs> um, et cetera, et cetera. And I was, I was excited to see folks at the company that were like, yes, this is what we need. We need this clarity we need this direction we need these prompts um because basically what it is is it's a it's an outline that has about 50 questions organized that help you think through the entire 360 degrees of what the pilot entails um and a little bit of thinking about the future and you know tell me the tell me the pricing model of the solution don't just tell me how much this pilot's going to cost um don't just tell me how much the solution's going to cost tell me how much this is actually going to cost your project to try out um, let's think about the problem in, in terms of the company and the business and what challenges we're trying to solve to improve the way we do work. And does it align with our strategies? Because if it's not, if it doesn't, we're not going to do it and things like that. And so it was a little bit of um, being able to push back, but also get people to see why we're asking these questions and what the benefit of it is. Because on the back end, we want the story to sort of speak for itself. We tried this out. This is the problem we were trying to solve. This is what we were trying to go for. And we hit those metrics. And we think this is a great tool to, to expand. I can build on that as an innovation leader. I can't really build on, yeah, that was cool. And we everybody should do it. So we really wanted to hone in on what's that um, that that planning process. And, and we've made huge strides in that. So I'm, I'm pretty proud of that. Um, to talk a little bit about the end of year planning is very similar to what's been talked about previously uh we like to start business planning and budgeting 
late Q3, uh, becomes a very early time of the year. We're also doing reviews and different things like that, just like um, Josh mentioned. Um, and, uh, or maybe it was Wilson, sorry. Um, <laughs> everybody's doing a lot of that same stuff. So um, pretty busy time of the year. But what we how we approach it is we, we approach it as a team. We have some pretty high level goals that are like three to maybe even six years out that sort of ma we maintain and we sort of look at what are the what are some objectives um, and trying to build off of last year's successes, like the pilot plan, for example, like what's the next step with that? Um, and that ties to a goal, for example, of being having a world class uh, innovation uh, program or, or, or process. So um, that's something that sort of, you know, keeps going, but we change objectives and initiatives as we go along. So we get we get pretty granular in the uh, in, in, in the planning process, but it's definitely a team effort. Yeah, it's funny. I was, <laughs> Lucas, I saw a little applause there, and it's funny that like some of that small stuff. But I didn't. I hate to even call it small. Being like, hey, like, why do we pilot things? Like, what are what are the things that qualifies as a pilot? I think we heard that through a couple other episodes Brian and I were doing, and yeah, just like if that's the first experience with working some of these kind of products, it's like it's a great it's a great goal to have. It's like, hey, let's maybe reevaluate what that looks like. And now it's, it's great stuff. Uh, Lucas, go for it. Yeah. Uh, I, Josh, I, I love all, all of that. And, and a lot of what I was going to kind of offer is, is very similar. Uh, I want to say, I think even at the time, this time last year, I know for sure, but even at the time, I think um, we recorded our episode uh, at ENR Future Tech uh, I was in an innovation lead role, and since then, I've kind of moved over into IT, uh, which, you know, in retrospect, is a monumental shift inside of a company culture. Um, and one, you know, not only did, did kind of my role come under an IT umbrella, but with that, we brought in uh, some of our data analytics tools and, and team members into that group. We brought in our computational design team members in that group. Um, to really kind of uh, institutionalize the innovation spirit inside the company and it not just being a side group that's like trying to break things and do new things. It's very intentional. Our pilots are very well kind of set up with what is the problems that you're trying to solve. Um, Josh and I, uh, the other Josh and I have an ongoing joke. Uh, every time we kind of get engaged to enter a new pilot or start looking at a new piece of software is it can solve up a problem, but is, it, but is it solving the right problem or the most important problem to the team or to the business? Because there's more solutions available than there are hours in the day. Uh, and we always try to rally our team members back around the, you know, to Josh's point, not we don't always like it but right now we're setting business goals for 2024 so we try to bring our team members back to the table when they kind of get this new idea of hey you know last year last december we said we were going to set out in 2024 and solve this problem for the business how does this pilot or proof of concept you know experiment align to to some of that work and uh, it's been really informative seeing it from the IT side of uh, there's so much other stuff that needs to happen behind the scenes for team members to go out and try new tools and implement new tools. And mm -hmm. uh, so being a finding a way to support that and nurture that grassroots spirit, but also have uh, the mechanisms to implement them at the organizational level when when things do hit and when things are like a good fit how do you bring that into the company and operationalize it? So it's been a really, you know, uh, really great year in that respect of thinking back on the changes that we've made. Yeah. It's also, it's, it's funny hearing you talk about like department and role changing. I feel like Brian, that was kind of the topic in June in, in the uh, reunion episode, we were talking about just new job titles and where departments were either merging or, you know, uh, kind of better defining themselves. And so, yeah, it's, it's interesting, even within the short six months, even on the back end of this year, hearing you say some of those things and how that's actually playing out. So, uh, Sean and the Turner boys, uh, we'll uh, we'll wrap oh, you up. So, Sean, go oh, for it here. Yep. Oh Sorry. no, go for it. Go for it, Brian. No, no, I, I was just gonna say yeah. Sorry, I thought I thought uh, you called the wrong person. Go ahead, Mr. Sean. I didn't really have my hand up, so 
Uh, oh, Randy, Randy, sorry, Randy, Randy, Randy had his hands up. Randy, <laughs> Randy had his hands up. That's what I was trying <laughs> to say. Yeah. Sean, I actually do have a question for you after Gary and Cole. There is something I don't want to miss. Randy, I was looking at Randy and I saw Sean. Randy, go go for it, buddy. We, we both have goatees, so it's okay. <laughs> so I was going to take a tangent off of, uh, I think the first Josh mentioned his love-hate relationship with goals, and I was maybe – kind of think for a minute like maybe instead of saying goal setting goals we can set navigational headings and so that allows some flexibility into how we get to that end goal uh, i'll use the word goal just for a minute but I, I think that's especially applicable when we're talking about uncharted waters and in our industry un we are in the uh, those uncharted waters with technology automation AI becoming more of a buzzword, like we don't really know exactly how these technologies are going to benefit us and how they're going to be rolled out, but we know there's value there. We know we need to investigate those because I think we all of our companies have the ultimate end goal of um, maximizing efficiency, reducing risk, ensuring safety, quality projects. You know, we, we all are aligned in that goal. How we get to it is up for um, – Know, for debate or how we see value in taking one path over the next. And the only way to do it is to try to navigate those waters. Yeah. I, th I think that's an important thing that you know, we won't dive into, but it's, it's, Hey, if, if goals like overwhelm you, like almost like take a step back and say like, all right, well, like what's the direction, right. Or I've heard it said like, Hey, what's yeah. the horizon that you're like, like going or navigating towards. And yeah, I, I don't know. Everyone has a different, uh, feel or emotional response to hearing goals but yeah I, I think it's helpful to hear you say too it's like hey take a step back if that's overwhelming like let's just think about the directions we're going and you know kind of setting some waypoints along the way uh i said turn Grant. a boy yeah go for it <laughs> well so like honestly a quote i love is um it's james clear it's like from the book atomic habits but he says something along the lines of like you don't rise to the level of your goals you fall to the systems you have in place so like whatever the process or systems you have, like you will always fall to those as opposed to like just setting that. But love that wow. quote. Brian over here just hitting us with some tweetable truth. There. <laughs> that was that was nice. Good one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the Turner boys. Well, yeah. Sorry, boys. Uh, Turner crew, maybe. I don't know. I just I always see you guys together, so I'm always just like, all right. <laughs> it's a team. Um, team. There it yeah, is. Tour we're kind of kind of echoing each other here. I think that one thing specifically, like five years ago, 10 years ago, what I felt a goal was is definitely not the same as it is today in my view, right? I think a goal, um, I almost kind of look at it as for a, a, a standard process, right? And, and in technology and innovation, there's is nothing standard about it, right? It's, if you set a goal, you know, for something in the next year, two years, even next couple of months, some sort of technology, some sort of tool, some sort of workflow will come through. It's almost expected now to change that goal, right? And, and to so I like the word, I'm not sure who used it earlier, but the direction, right? What what direction, what, what's trending, um, what type of, um, of of direction do we want to be based on, you know, where we're at as a company. Uh, we're a huge company, right? So we have a lot of silos. It's It has different types of goals. Um, you know, us, we're, we're pretty, pretty selfish in our goals, right? We want everything now, but we understand that it's not necessarily um, possible all the time. So uh, not to go too much on a tangent, but um, awareness and, and kind of adoption is the two words I would sum up our goals as, right? We wanted we wanted to get out of that proof of concept phase where everyone knows that what we're doing around reality capture with drone deploy specifically is a big value there. That's that's old news. It's more of spreading the gospel, right? Of, of getting that awareness to our 12,000 employees out there, right? Nationwide in different regions, different projects. Um, it's getting the awareness that these tools exist. Uh, and then and on top of that, getting that adoption um, um, from that group. So that's really been our focus this year, I would say, um, is not necessarily a goal, but where we wanted to be at in that direction is getting um, awareness and adoption as us as a company. I'm not sure, Cole. Yeah, and I think we've done a great job this year following that direction um, of awareness and adoption. I mean, we've went from three BDC folks regionally to seven this year. Yep. So that's been a, that's been a huge growth for us. Um you know, we've consolidated that department regionally. We used to just be three of us in Nashville supporting, and we've grown out uh, to support the entire region uh, physically as well. Um, but which, which like, goes back to the demand, right? We've, yeah, we kind of created a monster, right? Now we need more people to support it. So yeah, yeah. Uh, just, you, we've we've taken these tools and put them in superintendents' hands. We've ripped them away, and and now we're in trouble. 
-hmm. and and that's a great problem to have. Um, and so that that speaks to the adoption that we're pushing uh, every single day with these people um, or with our teams. But um, you know, I think the biggest thing this year for us is just simply pushing the concept of a profit center for ourselves and and getting that across to our leadership and making sure that they understand the value of allowing us to track everything that we do as a department so that we can grow and bring more value to our company and, and ultimately mm -hmm. to our clients um, at the end of the day. Yeah. I think what's hard, but also one of the best parts about this year, maybe it's this thing, the Thanksgiving mood is like, I don't feel like we, and maybe this is an industry thing. We don't like celebrate our wins enough, you know, like we're always like, ah, oh, next year, like, what are we going to do? What are like the themes and the goals? And like, I don't know. I, I think just to like maybe extend the the Thanksgiving table to this, you know, it's like, ah, I, it's, it's, it's awesome and encouraging to like celebrate wins across an industry and teams and departments. And like, yeah, I think just hearing things each from each of you guys, uh, it, it's just fun to hear. Cause knowing kind of your guys' teams and sizes of companies and challenges that you guys are all facing. Like, yeah, I just, I don't, there doesn't seem to be a platform across companies like this to be able to like share that. And I'm sure even you guys hearing some of these things like, oh, well, we're not a, a size of a Turner or we're not in like a Josh's team with DPR, but like, it is cool to hear them though. Cause it, I don't know, it's fun to be able to spotlight and just recognize a lot of hard work from a year uh, uh, kind of across the table, but Sean, I'm, I'm going to single you out here. And yes, I'm actually <laughs> looking at you, Sean, because <laughs> don't uh, you are the most seasoned uh, person here in this industry. Uh, in this that's call. pretty obvious. The, the and that's okay. Hey, but that out. <laughs> I, what I wanted to ask you was like, man, you've seen goals come and go across your career and, you know, this idea of goal setting and like what? Uh, what stands out to you? Like, what, what is your relationship with a goal? Right. Or like what? as you kind of think back to your career a little bit, like what, what, what do you think of when you hear that word? Like, well, I, I heard a lot of folks here earlier speaking pretty eloquently about the fact that goals are very uh, fluid and they, you, you can write them down. You can, you can chase them. But at the end of the day, we're builders. And uh, if you're a great builder, you can build goals around being a great builder. But as soon as you guide away from that, because you get into the other habits and, all the headwinds of economic problems or, I mean, I could go down a litany of things that we run into as an industry, but uh, uh, for me currently right now, for me as a goal, for me personally, is the people around me. I think I even said that in the podcast. I, I measure my successes by the successes of the people that I work with. And uh, uh, that's, that's kind of what I want to, I want to leave as a legacy as I walk away, knowing that we've left it in good hands, but <clears throat> we are in a different world today. The, uh, as I, as I've said before, technology plays such a instrumental role in our success and failure. And we have to find a way to bridge those gaps and connect all the dots with that. So I suppose a goal for me moving forward with the help of Randy and the people at Layton, we are a large company, is that we tie all these things together. We use this technology wisely. We use the, the AI wisely, but we never get away from the fact that we're still humans at heart and we have to teach how to be good, great builders. And that step, that lesson, is still a hands-on lesson. It's not through a computer and it's not through a, a program. We still have to teach ourselves and teach our people as we hire them how to be great builders. So I'd, I'd probably be my my goal all the time. Yeah, I, I love that. That's like what y'all really focused around in your guys' conversation. It's just cool even to see both of you guys here, you and Sean, or sorry, you and Randy both in here. And like, yeah, it's just neat. You know, it's fun to be able to pair up with someone a couple steps ahead of you in your career at your companies, which I'm sure all of you guys do have, right? And just to kind of learn from them and the <laughs> the wisdom perspective brings, right? It's like, oh, you've been here for 10 years longer than me. Maybe I shouldn't get as fretful as I do <laughs> about these things that uh, I think matter so much, but you're just like, ah, just stay cool here. We'll be fine, you know? But yeah, just the focus on building and yeah, you can't take so that. So if, if I could, one last thing before we, uh, the, the folks from Turner, I, I, they caught my ear on something. Uh, their goals are to try and find a way for leadership, senior leadership to to um, embrace some of the cost centers that y'all are going through. I, I, I agree and, and I I, uh, I would say champion that to the best of your ability. Um, but always remember that at the end of the day, we find ourselves in that, again, economic headwinds that come and go all the time. And we're just coming out of one. I mean, the news is really favorable for 2024 coming going on. But 2023 was 
certainly a wait and see year. So we all felt that. Um, I, I think that all all of what you guys all offer, young, old, whatever, in the programs, keep pushing for it. As far as it being a profit center, uh, from my perspective, as someone has to answer for that, and I, I'm in a lot of meetings for that, it's harder said than it, it's just hard to do. So uh, it's a cost of doing business. And if, if companies are unwilling to, to recognize the value of technology, then they're unwilling to change and grow to the economic requirements that are that are in front of us. So um, I, I hope that you all have that success moving forward, but don't quit because you guys are too valuable to the to the full end game of what we're trying to accomplish. But we have to mirror that again. We have to mesh that together with teaching our people to be great builders. Well, well said. Well said. Yeah. Um, love it. I, I want to turn the corner here a little bit. Um, good, good bow tie on 23. Um, and what excites you guys for next year? I mean, I feel like this is a little bit of a pause, right? We're like, all right, we're going to in between the holidays. And it's so funny. I, uh, I feel like this time of the year is kind of that catch up of like, all right, it's good seeing family and you're going to see him maybe again a little bit and take a little bit of time watching some bowl games and you know, whatnot here for the next few weeks. But like, yeah, what January one or whatever date it is when we put back in our seats and our desks, you know, come to start of the new year, like, man, what are you guys excited about for next year that, um, that really gets you thinking at night, you know, over these next few weeks before the year ends and, um, any, anything kind of stand out that, um, you guys have been thinking about more. Yeah, I can go first. Uh, if, uh, yeah, go for it. I'm, I'm, I missed the hand raise. Sorry. Hey, that's okay. Sorry, Gary. <laughs> I beat you to it. Um, Lucas mentioned this earlier, touched on it a little bit. He was talking about, um, innovation groups within the organization and sort of trying to bring those, um, above table or make those mainstream, uh, as I like to call it. Um, and we have a, a similar strategy where we have uh, volunteer sort of peer groups in, in uh, several business units. And we are planning, and this is something that I've become quite literally obsessed with at this point, um, which is like trying to do that, like trying to, what, what does that really need? Like, what do we need to make that successful? And what does that look like? And um, we're beginning to define that, but it's it's really around um, transferring the ownership of who's really maintaining that group and holding that group accountable, accountable, um, and and transferring that accountability, or at least making it a dual accountability situation where um, myself as an innovation leader and not a necessarily a business leader that's running a you know business unit or um, overseeing some sort of work group or something that is supporting a business unit. Um, I, I can only do so much when I, when I push those, uh, those initiatives and those, in those groups. And we've had, um, quite a bit of success. We, we have, you know, very successful groups and we also have situations where momentum builds and then it dies. Um, and really trying to learn from that and go, okay, what, what's what's working over here that's keeping that going without a lot of maintenance and how can we take that approach and that culture and um sort of bottle it up make it you know turn it into a framework and teach people how to do it um and then figure out how to support them rather than trying to push the flywheel ourselves um there's only so many of us and um really what i really want to do is democratize the innovation process in a way. Um, I want everyone at DPR uh, to be able to know where to get stuff and how to how to leverage our program. Um, and that that is the way to try new things, right? And so um, that's that's one of my big goals for this year is like yeah. figure out a rollout plan, uh, really, you know, talk to some uh, business leaders about what that needs from them. Uh, talk to them about what I'm bringing to the table um, because there's a lot in store uh, in terms of benefits for their people. Um, it's an opportunity to lead a, a peer group that not everybody gets that opportunity. It's an opportunity to facilitate and learn things and get training that, um, you know, is not exclusive, but, you know, doesn't necessarily get offered to everybody. 
Um, it gets them access to different different people and different leaders, um, including myself and the rest of the innovation team. So there's a lot of benefits there, but there's tons of benefits to the business and and uh, specifically the local business unit. So uh, really looking forward to that and want to make a big push for that. Yeah, I, I love the term you use. Just like when man, when you're obsessed with something, you like are committed. And like I feel like that term just has such a negative connotation. But man, in our world, it's like, oh man, that that's when it gets really fun. It's like, no man, I'm obsessed to figure that out. And yeah, I think just like hearing what you said is just like, hey, how do you communally help grow innovation within your like teams and and companies? And that's hard to do. Like you guys obviously are doing amazing things in different regions and jobs. And like, how do you, how do you personalize that with people from like a community standpoint internally to help grow it even more than what it is and, you know, putting some structure and, and handles to it. So it's awesome. It's cool to hear. Uh, Lucas. I, I didn't want to jump in in, in front of Gary and, and Cole. Um, you guys, I saw, I saw the thumbs up. I couldn't tell if that was a hand up or just uh you were, <laughs> No, yeah, no, no, go, go for it, Lucas. We'll get we'll get to those guys. <laughs> I yeah, I mean, I, I would say looking at twenty three, you know, again to build on Josh's um, component or, or kind of what he was mentioning there. I think the one of the biggest things that I'm excited about, outside of all of the fun, you know, robotics and computer vision and AI stuff that's out there that seems like we've been talking about in these circles for five, ten years, is like finally starting to happen so like that itself is exciting uh but what i'm most excited about is taking all of that and applying it in a meaningful way to solve real problems for our team members uh simplify their operations connect things uh well and kind of rethink about the user the the experience of a ryan team member right um Generational changes are are happening inside of everyone's businesses. Um, it's kind of the the upcoming expectation that our systems and tools work better together, and it's not uh, the brute force of you know typing things into spreadsheets and you know those. While well, that probably worked for a lot of us for a lot of years. Uh, we're starting to see kind of that shift that there's higher demand and higher expectations for kind of the operating procedure of your company working together. So kind of in my role, new role, I get to work with a, a lot of our really great in-house development team members that are building tools and building those integrations and our own UIs and our own things to make being a Ryan team member on a job suck less like go home earlier because the tools ideally someone there is a group of people working behind the scenes to make the tools function together rather than having 37 different websites you need to go to over the course of your day to do 10 jobs right why do you have 37 websites to do 10 jobs so um it's been really fun and it's something to really kind of like catapult us into the next year and as these new, you know, AI and things come into play, as Josh's point, they're they're disruptors. They're going to change your roadmap that you thought you had set in stone. Uh, they're going to change it. They're going to change it the minute you you think you have something figured out. And to take all of those and feed that into that model, and and hopefully come out on the other end uh, with a better product. It's it's exciting. Well said. I was just thinking, like, yeah. You guys are like getting boxes from your basement or pulling things down from your attic. And like, this is the, like, I, we do a lot of fall cleaning instead of spring cleaning, but it's like <laughs> how hard that is at home. And then you realize that's like exactly what's happening at the office is like, Oh yeah. 38 tabs of things. There's like a 38 boxes of things I got to sift through at home. <laughs> it's yeah. It's, it's awesome to just like declutter that stuff and be like, all right, what do I need to keep using here? And, yeah, I just thinking that that is definitely a theme for a lot of folks next year and uh, trying to stay all connected. Josh. Um, <clears throat> hear me all right? Sorry. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, so, well, for me, I think there, there's a couple of things. Um, we're, we're growing in the new product types as a, as a, as a builder and developer. So 
new product types takes new approaches. So operational changes are going to need to happen. We're going to need to take different looks at how we go about managing the day-to-day. -day. So with that comes new process and, and trying to design that new process internally, you know, whether it's our scheduling approach on a project or, you know, how, how we go about, you know, just layering in, you know, daily activities that our, our managers and site are supposed to do, you know, they're going to change due to this new product type that they're, that we're working on. So I, I enjoy, and I'm looking forward to supporting that and trying to build that out and figure out what that looks like for our teams. Uh, so that's the first thing. But the second thing I, I started thinking about that we're planning for and, and going to focus hard on here in the first part, especially of 2024, is how to layer technology into our operations in new uh, new capacities and new arenas. And, and what I mean by that is um, uh, Lucas and I, I think have both been talking with our, our sustainability group and we're starting to look at, okay, how, how does sustainability fit, you know, our goals there, how does that fit with our tech tech adoption plan and what's available um, with respect to technology out there in the sustainability realms of our operations um, or scheduling, same, same thing with scheduling. There, there's a long ways we can go with scheduling. So how can we layer in some new technology and new uh, new opportunities there to make our scheduling operations more efficient and better and, and start to capitalize on a lot of information that's that's at hand there in, in those tools. So those are just a couple of things that kind of come to mind for me with respect to, you know, the coming months. Yeah, I think the theme that like, it's so funny when we've done these episodes, like you guys obviously don't know what each other is talking about from episode to episode, but the themes that stand out so much and at Wilson, this was like the very first one of the season. You were just talking about like, Hey, like technology's impact on our people. And like, here it is like in every, in every episode we did, I feel like the season that for sure felt like the common thread through it. Of like, how do we get people to go home earlier? How do we not make them feel as overwhelmed with the 37, you know, things it's just interesting because I, I feel like that is a par huge paradigm shift when people think about technology now is not like technology for technology's sake but like hey like how does this actually impact us like in our roles like what we're doing and um so it just to call out and even hearing some of the notes you guys are saying here it's just um the excitement for that next year and being the communal side of it josh and, and also just like the, the technical side of it too other josh but yeah good good note brian i saw your hand up in there too yeah, I mean, I just wanted to say, you know, we hear all these statistics on like, you know, by 20, you know, 35, we're going to be like decarbonized, like like all these, all these different types of uh, statistics. Like, I'm curious, like for your average, you know, let's say hundred million dollar plus general contractor, how long it's going to take until reality capture plays a part in every single project, no matter how small the project is, um, like it's just going to become the standard. Like at what point is every single project going to have some touch of this? I would, you know, I was just curious like what people thought about like the rollout plan, like company wide, you know, you have these anything from a $5 million fit out all the way to your data centers. Think about how fast this Sean. Think about how fast it's come on board. I mean, I, 12 years ago, I don't remember ever talking about this stuff and, uh, not not to this degree and here we are six years on our we have a large Vanderbilt project here in Nashville that we're just wrapping up we've been here six years we're getting ready to start another big one but the technology that we've implemented in that six years is multiplied I, I just I think it's going to come fast I really do I think it's uh, technology is going to steamroll um, some of our processes and that's to so, so some of these folks have been talking today getting them implemented now are so, so important to try and make them part of your tools and your toolbox for your people. It, it's just happening. It's happening right in front of us. Especially Sean, like a huge part of your episode was talking about the, like how you use it to communicate to the owner. And like, now that owner is exposed to something that they, they're like, why wouldn't I do this at going forward? Right. So it's That's just right. like, you kind of have this, right. yeah, yeah. This yeah. multiple multiplication effect. But yeah, that, that, that was pretty much just my question for the group in general, just like in their own mind. Wilson, you want to add to that? I was going to say that. I mean, that's how we we stay competitive. That's the reason our ownership's invested so heavily into technology is you know, for us to be a um, $400 million a year in revenue company sitting here with guys who are topping $10 billion a year in revenue. Uh, you know, we've got, it's, it's fast and we've got to adopt it quickly. Um, so 
you know, we, we see it on our side, on the smaller side, that it's an imperative to stay competitive. Um, and it's, it's turned into from like, it was an imperative, you know, started out as an imperative to stay competitive. Then it was like, we talked about it on our podcast a little bit was, you know, we needed technology as a way to improve quality of life of our people and, you know, build better. That's, I think we're pretty aligned with everybody here that like, we want to build cool stuff and um, technology enables us to build some of the really, you know, really cool projects that we all got into the construction industry to build. And now like what I'm looking forward to on like 2024 is we've built out a really strong VDC group. We've built out really strong construction tech and that is paving the way for things like sustainability. It's paving the way for our planning and scheduling groups. It's paving the way for data analytics. Um, so that's, you know, what we're looking for is like maintain excellence within our VDC group so that we can start to really put some horsepower behind things like being sustainable. Because if you, if you can't, if your head's in the ground and you're focused on the immediate problem in front of you as a, as a superintendent, and you're looking at what this latest issue is on site, you're not considering what is this thing I can, you're not planning for the future because you're dealing with that problem right there. So if we can solve those problems ahead of time with technology, so we don't have to be fa faced with them and solve them in the field, we get to plan ahead for cool things like sustainability. We get to build out cool tools and procedures with our, our data analytics and um, start to grow these departments that are now for us and in, in kind of their infancies that were what VDC to the company was five years ago. So we're, we're starting that kind of next cycle of let's keep our VDC groups going strong and now let's have them clearing the trees out ahead and let, let's look for what's, what's next with all these other different opportunities in the business. Well said, uh, Gary Cole, what do you guys got? And then we'll, we'll land the plane here and get you guys to your weekends. Yeah. I mean, just to kind of echo, um, a lot of the, the buzzwords I heard from, from this group, uh, expectations is a big one, right? This, that's what's changed. I think, I think that, you know, as Josh said, we've always been ex obsessed with what we do. Uh, we kind of have to be right to be in this kind of business. I think we're all obsessed with technology on some level, but what's changed and what we've kind of been seeing uh, that would work really in my whole career. I think what's changed in the last couple of years, really this year, is just clients expectations. Like they've heard of it enough. They, they, they see things are out there now. Like they expect us to deliver a certain way, right. And in a more efficient way. So, you know, it doesn't take us to be advocates for technology really anymore. Like it has in the past, we have our executives, our people in senior leadership, they're hearing these comments from clients, right? So as these clients are expecting us to deliver um, a certain, you know, in a certain way using technology, it's, it's kind of, instead of us going to our executives to change things, it's our executives coming to us to, to supplement those, those requests from clients. So I think that's just a big, a big boom um, that we've seen in the last year or two that that's allowed us to, to scale our services and and our um, kind of our plan even more. Yeah, the path has been paved, needless to say. And the only thing I'm going to add for 2024, I'll say it. I, I think one person mentioned it, but I'm going to say it. AI. <laughs> what, what is that? <laughs> I am ecstatic about AI. It is a minion that each and every single one of us should be using in some form or fashion. I think the future of AI with everybody in their everyday lives is about to explode. Um, and it's a really exciting. Obviously, there is the the side of everybody that's thinking like it's the demon. But I promise you guys, <laughs> AI, AI out there is those little yellow guys, those little minions out there ready to help us and do our jobs, mm -hmm. make, our, make our lives easier every single day. And, um, you know, we've been spending years and just consuming data from left and right. And data has just become a problem at this point. We just don't use it. And AI here is to use that and help us on our everyday lives. So I'm ecstatic about it, ready to see it change our industry. And uh, I mean, heck, it's popping into all of our tools nowadays. So it's great. It's funny. I, I haven't heard it associated as a minion, but I'm, I might steal that one from, from you, Cole. I like uh, that. But it's interesting, Sean, what you said of like, gosh, we've been out here for six years or even just, I think, 12 years is the like time frame you use. I mean, we weren't even talking. I mean, some, I, I shouldn't say, I shouldn't, this is a blanket statement. We weren't all talking about AI like 12 months ago when we first started this podcast two seasons ago yeah. and like how fast that even subset has changed. And obviously there's reasons for it. There's so many things that would show why that's changed so fast. But yeah, I just love what you said, Sean, of like, oh, well, we've been out here for six years and think how much stuff has changed. And now we're talking about a 12 month period with 
things like AI. So yeah, it is crazy. Each one obviously has its own kind of speed and uh, I guess path of how much it's accelerating, but uh, Randy, Josh, and then I'll, I'll close this out. Uh, Randy, what do you got? I'll be quick. So I, <clears throat> everything we've talked about here, things looking forward to, I, what I'm excited about is to see how these uh, processes and technologies can allow the human touch to thrive. Instead of being bogged down with repetitive, mundane work, um, chasing data, trying to search through things, you know, when we're leveraging all of these things working together, it allows us to do our jobs better, more effectively, and ultimately, you know, our quality of life, not just at home, but on the job, you know, doing our, our normal activities can be better and allowing us just to, to thrive. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, well, well said. Josh, go for it. Yeah, I wanted to go back to uh, the question about reality capture and, and adoption there. I think that um, for for me, that's a gigantic topic, <laughs> right? Um, that's, that's a huge thing that I think um, probably most, if not everybody on the call would, would agree that like reality capture has become this term that is just as big as VDC. Um, it's, it's got its own industries. It's got its own service providers. Um, I think, you know, it's, it's hard to put a prediction on your question, Brian, but I think to some degree, like everybody's using some sort of reality capture at this point, because I consider photos reality capture, right? So, um, I, I think what I'm seeing though, if you think of trends is, and I, I've talked about this in, on, on other forums, but I think that I think we're seeing a very similar trend to what we saw in, I'll say around 2008 to 2012-ish with VDC, where there's a combination of a lot of things happening. Um, I think the industry, as it usually is, is a little bit further ahead, and we're sort of coming out of that trough of disillusionment with, um, with reality capture and beginning to be more... Um, subjective about what we can use it for and finding specific use cases and thinking about it from a use case perspective and not just the technology first, um, but also seeing other indications that um, we're getting to sort of a, a, a tipping point, if you will. Um, and, and that's the owners are getting involved. Owners are not getting involved, but they're not only getting involved rather, but they're creating requirements and specifications and they're going out and learning what standards are out there and trying to implement them. And I think what we need to learn from what happened with VDC is now is our time to step in and say, I love that you are getting involved in that. Let me help you understand like what to ask for, because um, what happened with BIM is everybody started asking for the world and it became very interesting really quickly. Um, and all of that really highlights, you know, some additional needs we need for uh, reality capture in terms of, you know, planning and understanding how how we're going to, you know, execute it. But um, it's a really exciting time because of all those things. I think that we're on the cusp of a lot more adoption and a lot more converging of technologies that, you know, come together just like construction site and drone deploy, you know, come together and and see something that you know, one plus one is, is, is greater than two kind of thing. You get more value out of it. So um, really exciting time. I think we're, we're, like I said, getting, getting to that tipping point. So I think it's only a matter of, you know, a handful of years, Brian. Awesome. Uh, team, we are creeping up towards uh, our time here. And one, uh, I said this at the top, but man, it's so fun. These conversations, we could have these weekly and, <laughs> quite often uh if we wanted and just really appreciate you guys squeezing us in and a busy season in between holidays and wrapping up the season um uh, if you guys haven't connected with each other obviously we'll put links to your guys's profiles and if the listeners here uh, if you guys listening in uh, aren't connected with these guys on linkedin obviously would encourage you to do that uh, they are incredible resources to not only brian and i and the, the drone deploy team but i'd I'm sure love that uh, they would love to answer any questions that you guys have too that are listening in. Uh, and it's just great. It's fun to see how much this community has grown just around this topic of building different, implementing different, you know, all, all the things that Brian and I are trying to kind of focus on with these episodes. And I, <laughs> this was never uh, intended, you know, when we created uh, this of just like tracking followers and how many people are listening, but 
I think milestones we talked about it earlier, you know, fun to celebrate. We, I think we, I think it was the Thanksgiving day, Brian, that it went over yeah. a thousand followers. And that was kind of funny. Um, yeah. I mean, and that, that speaks a lot to you guys, right? You guys are doing incredible things and people are really interested in hearing how you guys are doing that. And in a disconnected industry like construction, it's so hard to, you know, uh, interface and interact and collaborate with, you know, teams of your talent and companies of your guys' statures. And that, that's what Brian and I were hoping to do was just have awesome conversations like this, uh, provide hopeful resources for people who are interested in the topic. And uh, yeah, we couldn't do that without you guys. So one, just again, appreciate all the the time that you've given us and the the wisdom that you've shared with us. It's, it's really fun. And we feel really fortunate to be on the receiving end of that. And, and hopefully the folks listening in would feel that same way too. So Brian, anything before we close this out and, and let these guys go? No, it's just kind of surreal that at the beginning of last, at the beginning of this year, when we first launched this podcast, it was, it's kind of a whim of a decision between us. You know, we just met each other. And then the week later, we had an extra booth at Procore and we said, why don't we just start a podcast? And to see the, like the, the conversations and just like the buy-in from the executive teams, the buy-in from operations, like just like with safety, right? Like when, when safety became like a very large issue, it was like, oh, we have a safety guy. Yeah. Like that, that, it, that person's project, but now it's safety is every single person at the company's responsibility. And starting to see like a lot of that same type of culture go into the technology has been, it's been hopeful, grateful, and just looking forward to another year. And who knows by the next, by the time next year, what this conversation could sound like is, is the sky's the limit. So super exciting uh team we are in between you and your weekends and your families uh many many thanks uh, appreciate you guys hopping on and making this reunion episode happen uh, for the folks that are tuning in we hope you guys uh, enjoyed this conversation something new that linkedin just did uh, which we just uh, caught wind of this is uh, you can actually message our page on linkedin so if you have questions or things uh, feel free to message us over there we'd love to uh, answer some of those or point you guys in the right direction either to our guests that um, are on here today or any other uh, episode that we've put out there. So one, appreciate you guys again. Thank you guys uh, so much. Many, many thanks. And uh, thanks for listening in. We will see you guys next season and talk soon. Take care, guys. Make sure to subscribe to Built Different on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere you listen to podcasts. Let's build this community together.